Take from us. We haven't even seen it, but we like it. So far. <laughs> It's a good packer. <laughs> One more, yep. One, two, three from us. You gonna tell them? On July 1st, 2012, we had about 35, 40 people come out to this forest here. It's the, uh, on the backside of Elphinstone Mountain. It's a yellow cedar dominated forest mixed with hemlock and Pacific yew. And when we say ancient, we're talking, we're not talking about just old growth, which is defined as 250 years. We're talking about in the age of 800 to 1600 years old, there's been recorded yellow cedar uh, stumps where they've been able to verify exact ages. And um, on the Cairn Range, which is about the same elevation as here, the Canada's oldest tree is 1626 years old. So we feel this is equivalent in age to the oldest trees in Canada. So uh, people came out here, they, we have a loop tour here, and uh, we gave them a complete overview of the different reasons why this forest is, is very important to, to protect. Here's another old yellow cedar that I believe, uh, well, it certainly had some uh, scars formed on it. The, the question is, were the human origin or natural origin? Uh, I believe there's a good chance that it was, uh, the bark was stripped by people living here hundreds of years ago in this area, uh, coming up to harvest cedar, yellow cedar bark. And in this case, uh, the healing columns formed three columns because the bark was stripped from more than one place on the tree. So here you have one column, another column here, and the third one, over here. This is the third column, and then if you look up, you can see them joining together higher up on the tree. However this scar was made, either by natural causes or by, uh, you know, culturally by uh, native people that lived in this area, this was a very long time ago. It's a historic scar. And we're, we're gonna hopefully have a independent archeologist uh, come in here soon and make a more definitive uh, analysis of these scars. And if you can determine that uh, uh, these are actually made by people that lived here for a few thousand years, then this is actually an archeological site, officially. Any culturally modified tree that was uh, the, where the scar was made before 1846 is a protected archeological site. So if you can determine that, that would help save this forest. Here we are at the falling boundary. You can see this, the flagging that's hanging here, that marks the, the edge of the falling boundary. And it also uh, marks the edge of this forest. And then if you look up this way, then we see the previously uh, logged area about approximately 30, 40 years ago. Uh, and you can see that uh, that forest is nothing like this. That, that forest is a 30-year-old forest. This is a, a forest that has evolved since the last ice age with trees up to over a thousand years old. This habitat is nothing like that, a natural forest habitat. There's no bare dens here. There's no hollow old dead trees. Uh, there's no woodpecker, uh, 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 what, wildlife trees that I see in here. There's no yellow cedar, uh, even young ones. This, this forest will never be like the one that we just uh, left there. I think the, the, the lesson out of that is that this ancient type of uh, yellow cedar mountain hemlock forest uh, will basically never return. If this, if this is uh, logged off now, it's gone forever. It's, a, it's an endangered type of ecosystem in our view and the little bit that's left now should be protected completely. If you can see this, uh, this flagging here, this pink flagging that says road location, this is where they propose to put a road for the purpose of uh, you know, logging this block. So this, this will all get um, scraped down to bare ground. That means that mounds like this, which is basically the remains of old decaying trees, that'll all be gone. 
Like this would be a, uh, you know, this is a side hill that we're looking at. So there'll be a ditch on the upper side and this will be excavated right down to gravel bottom. A road is the most devastating thing you can do to a, to a forest. About uh, 10,000 years ago, the, the last ice age um, started to retreat and this area was all covered by ice, um, you know, 20,000 years ago or when, whenever the last ice age occurred. But it, what's known for sure is that it basically retreated from 10,000 to 8,000 years ago. But that's the, the, another uh, interesting part of that is that that's well after the first humans came to uh, this part of the world from Asia. So as the ice retreated, the plants, the forest, and the people came into this area simultaneously. So the, 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 the people, the native people that lived here have had the same length of time that they spent here basically as this ancient forest has. You could say that this forest has a 5,000 year shared history with the native people. You can hear the creek in the background. That's one of the two tributaries to the main Roberts Creek Channel. And uh, the logging will come up right up to the edge of this tributary. And um, when an area is logged, there's four times as much water shed off, off of a uh, surface. So you could see higher peak flows in this creek. And Roberts Creek is an important and historic salmon spawning uh, creek for the Sunshine Coast. So the, the concern is also peak flows will lead to further erosion downstream and the salmon, it's well documented that salmon eggs are very, have very low tolerance to any extra sediment going over their eggs. So for a whole bunch of combined reasons, this area really needs to be protected. And again, Sunshine Coast has only 2% protected areas we need to bring that up to at least 12%. This is a prime candidate to be set aside.